Hey guys. Well, I'm on my uh, final day of vacation here in Arizona, and it's been pretty, pretty quiet, pretty peaceful so far. I've had the opportunity to write the notes for the book of Job, the book of Psalms, the book of Proverbs, and I'm actually working on the book of Ecclesiastes right now. It was my aim to record the videos down here and then upload them once I got back to California, but unfortunately, <laughs> my mic broke, so I'm going to have to do all of that once I get back to California. I wanted to speak about this, um, this whole Obama issue of recognizing homosexual marriage. The fact of the matter is that um, there's no such thing. It's an abomination. But more than that, for all the Christians out there who have been waffling on this issue, not only on this issue, but on just about every other issue out there, the Christians who have not been standing on the Word of God, first of all, shame on you. Second, we're not called to be popular. We're called to be faithful to the Word of God. It is not our duty to worry about what the critics think of us. We live in a godless society. We live in a society that hates the Lord Jesus Christ, that hates the Bible. And so when you stand for the Lord Jesus Christ and what he says, you're going to be hated. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, if they hated me, you can be sure that they're going to hate you. Because a servant is not greater than his master. We are living in post-Christian America. And President Obama is just a reflection of that. Wicked leaders are a judgment on wicked people. Wicked people put Obama in office, so they should not be surprised that he is advocating um, such wickedness as homosexual marriage. By the way, this is not a political message because I do not support Mitt Romney either. Mitt Romney is a member of a cult. Mormonism is a cult. Um, if he doesn't repent of that, he's going to die in his sins and go straight to hell. So, trust me, this is not a political message. I don't support Obama. I don't support Mitt Romney. I'm not going to vote for either man. But, you know, I'm just here to, to tell you Christians, those of you who have been waffling, you better know exactly what you stand for. You better start standing on the rock that is Jesus Christ and start standing on his word and stop worrying about uh, being liked by people. Stop worrying about, um, you know, people saying negative things about you. It comes with being a Christian. It comes with identifying with the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I've had my critics here on YouTube and other places. You know, I can tell you, <laughs> when you when you come out for something and you stand for something or you come out against something, they're going to come after you, but so be it. So be it. I'm not called to be popular. I'm called to be faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ. We are called to be faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ and not to men, because one day we will all stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. Not before our critics. It is irrelevant what our critics say about us. What matters is what the Lord Jesus Christ says about us because He is Almighty God. And He's the only critic we should be worried, worried about. We're living in very dark days. Persecution is coming to America. Well, it's not coming to America. It's here. It's only going to get worse. You know, we have escaped so far. You know, persecution has been going on in Africa, in Asia, in India, places like that, you know, Middle East, for years. And America has escaped, but I sense that America is heading into very dark and perilous times. And uh, Bible-believing evangelical Christians, they're going to be coming after us. And you better know exactly what you believe, why you believe it, and then you better stand on it. This is no time to be a milk toast Christian, a waffling Christian, a pandy waist Christian. Elijah said, 
what, 28, 2900 years ago? If the Lord is God, serve him. If Baal, then serve him. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, you're either for me or against me. There is no middle ground. If you're for the Lord Jesus Christ, then serve him. If you're for the world, then serve him, then serve the world. But you can't serve both. You can't have allegiance to both. This is a time for Christians to stand up and stand on the word of God. Not be worried about the negative things that people may say about you. If we say that we believe that we believe in the Bible, then we better start standing on the Bible and start defending what it says. Thus says the Lord. That's what we should be cared about. Thus says the Lord. Not thus says man or what is man going to think about me. No, thus says the Lord. That's it. We give an account to the Lord Jesus Christ and Him only. Nobody else. Stop the waffling. Stop the double-mindedness between the world and the Lord Jesus Christ. If you say that you're a Christian, start acting like one. Start standing on the Word of God. Start saying, thus says the Lord. Don't worry about what the world says about you. They're going to persecute you anyway. As I said, I can testify that when you, uh, when you stand for what you believe, people are going to hate you. Trust me. You know, I've had my critics here on YouTube who've attacked me for just about everything, but one of the reasons I go on, one of the reasons I continue is because at the end of the day, I don't really care what people think about me. The only thing I care about is hearing the words from my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And you know, <laughs> one with God is a majority. As long as I am being faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ, that's the only thing that matters to me. People can attack me all day long. It's irrelevant. If the Lord Jesus Christ is pleased with me standing on his word, that's good enough for me. And that should be good enough for you. Know what you believe, why you believe it, and then stand for it. Stand on the Bible. Stand with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you say that you're a Christian, start acting like you're a Christian. Stand and be faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless.